So here's all the equations that we'll be using on the quiz tomorrow. Only four of them can be used for calculations. The rest of them are just informational. Starting with the top. So this is the equation for gravitational force. Thank you. This is the equation for gravitational force. So FG is gravitational force. Capital G is always 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11th. Gravity is always between two objects, so M1 and M2 are the masses of those two objects, and R squared is the center to center distance of those objects. For example, if I have the moon and the earth, you've got to measure from the center of one to the center of the other. For something like a person standing on a planet, you can just use the radius of the planet because if you're standing on a planet, the center of your body is, is one radius away from the center of that planet. You can kind of ignore the, the one meter that goes from your feet to your belly button. So that's the first equation. Second one, this is little g. This is called acceleration due to gravity. Not to be confused with regular old acceleration. So be careful when you read the problems. And FG is just a combination of these two. FG is useful for something on the surface of any planet. Each planet has its own value for G. And finally, this is Newton's third law. Um, basically, if you see a problem where there are two masses and two accelerations, you know you're going to use that. We're skipping number one. We'll go straight to number two. Consider a bowling ball that strikes a single pin. The 5.4 kilogram bowling ball experiences an acceleration of negative 0.667 and the pin experiences an acceleration of 3.34. Calculate the mass. So let's annotate. Drop this in the chat. What is that right there? If it's in kilograms, what is it? Thank you, it's mass, very good. So we've got M, we'll keep reading. The bowling ball has an acceleration of this. Well, that's acceleration then. The pin experiences an acceleration of 3.34. There's another acceleration. Calculate the mass of the pin. Like I said moments ago, if you've got two masses and two accelerations, you know that you're going to be using this equation. The ones and the twos in this equation are to differentiate between two objects. So the bowling ball, I'll say the bowling ball is object number one. So put the mass of the bowling ball here and the acceleration of the bowling ball here. We're looking for the mass of the pin, so I'll leave that there. And the acceleration of the pin will be 3.34. Notice that the pin has larger acceleration. That's because it's lighter mass. So we're expecting a smaller number than 5.4 here. We'll divide both sides by negative 3.34. I don't put don't don't confuse that with subtraction. That is division. And look at this, we could type this all in our calculator at once to get our answer. 5.4 times negative 0.667 divided by negative 3.34. M2 is going to be 1.08 kilograms. Mass is always negative. So if you get a negative answer, that means you made a mistake. I think I misspoke. This is always positive. I'm not sure if I said that right before. Anyway, this is always positive. So if you get a 
mass is always positive. If you get a negative answer for mass, that means you did something wrong. And look at that. Um, mass is less because the bowling ball is, ooh, oh no, yeah. The pin experiences more acceleration because it's lighter weight, lighter mass. Onward. Number three, two astronauts of differing mass push off of one another while floating freely in space. The acceleration of the 60 kilogram astronaut is three meters per second squared. Let's label those. Kilograms is M is A. What is the acceleration of the 50 kilogram astronaut? So there's another M. And look at that. They're asking us for acceleration. Just like before. Just like before, we have two M's and two A's. Got a pretty good question in the chat there. What about the negative sign in front of M2? So, okay, let me go back to that in a second, uh, for a second here. So, yeah, mass is always supposed to be positive. Someone's saying, wait, this mass is negative. Not really. This is just the right-hand side of the equation is negative. So it's kind of like multiplying the right-hand side of the equation by negative one. Great question. Okay, or maybe whatever, anyway. So here's our equation. Uh, we'll plug everything in. This one's pretty easy. I mean, that's the heavy astronaut and then we've got the lighter weight astronaut over here. So it's 60 times three equals negative. 50 times A2. Once again, pretty easy. We divide both sides by negative 50. And you could probably type that in your calculator all at once. 180 divided by negative 50. Looks like we'll get a negative answer here. Negative 3.6 meters per second squared. So there's our answer for two. Another little trick for signs. Notice this one's negative. That's okay. Acceleration can be negative. Um, basically what you need to remember is that a1 and A2 always have opposite signs. So in the problem, we were given a positive acceleration, positive three, and so our acceleration and our answer is negative. A1 and A2 are always opposite. And that's about it. I hope those are pretty easy. We'll go on to the tougher ones. All right. Number four. We're going to get a little more complicated on these. Gravity can be tricky, especially when you're going to different planets. So here we go. Saturn has a equatorial radius of 6.0 times 10 to the 7th and a mass of 5.67 times 10 to the 26th kilograms. Compute the acceleration due to gravity on the surface of Saturn. All right, let's see if anyone was paying attention at the beginning. Read carefully here. I'm wrong about this. Why am I not calculating A? What am I really calculating here in this problem? Read the whole sentence on A here. What are they really asking us for? G, very good. We're looking for little G. Because it says 
acceleration due to gravity. So really, acceleration due to gravity is little g. We're looking for little g because big G is always the same number. So let's do it. Big G, no matter where you are in the universe, no matter what object you're talking about, it's just a random number that gets plugged in. It uh, is a way of adjusting units. But we don't really need to know that. We just need to remember to always plug it in for G. All right, I've, uh, I'm running out of space here. I shouldn't have closed my parentheses. 5.67 times 10 to the 26th divided by let's see if this is a center to center distance it's kind of like what I said before yeah if you're standing on a planet the radius of that planet is the center to center distance so we'll plug it in right here 6.00 times 10 to the seventh and don't forget the square very commonly missed a tragic mistake practice typing this in your calculator now because really it's the main challenge in this problem typing it incorrectly the the things that are missed are the square like i said along with proper parentheses this is the parentheses that you want to do. You got to make sure you do this red set of parentheses. The top doesn't really matter. You don't really need those parentheses, but this one on your calculator you have to have. So if you're having trouble getting 10.51, I'll show you how it's done afterwards. Part B, they want to know what's the ratio of a person's weight on Saturn to that of earth i'll show you the easy way and i'll show you i'll show you the i'll just show you the easy way why not here's what they're asking here's what ratio is they want fg on saturn divided by fg on earth so this is like ratio is like uh twice as much or four times as much half as much so if you were twice as heavy on Saturn as you were on Earth, this number would be twice as big and you'd divide to get two. Basically, ratio is just one divided by the other. Maybe label that so you're prepared for the quiz. Ratio. Well, what is FG? To get the weight of someone on Earth, you take the mass of that person times G of Earth. To get the weight of someone on, I switched them. This is supposed to be Saturn. Saturn's on top. So to get the weight of someone on Saturn, you take their mass times G of Saturn. To get their weight on Earth, the mass of that person times G on Earth. Notice we have M and M. Mass doesn't change when you go from planet to planet, only weight. Only FG changes when you move to a different planet. So M divided by M is just one. These will cancel out. So really to get the ratio of weights, you just divide the numbers. It'll be 10.51 over 9.8. Our answer is 1.07. There's no unit for this. The meaning of this is on Saturn you weigh 1.07 times as much. If this were 2, it would mean you weigh twice as much on Saturn as you do on Earth. But no, not here. You would weigh 1.07 times as much on Saturn as you do on Earth. Long story short, if that problem loses you, just take G of the part A and divide it by G of Earth. 9.8. Number five, will be our last one here. On Earth, two parts of a space probe 
weigh 11,000 and 3,400. Let's stop right there. What does that mean? The weight, weight is FG. So those are each FGs on the surface of Earth. These parts are separated by a center to center distance of 12 and may be treated as uniform spherical objects. Find the magnitude of the gravitational force that each exerts on the other out in space, far away from any objects. So here's what they're saying. On Earth, when they're on Earth, one object is pulled down with a force of 11,000. The other object is pulled down with a force of 3,400. But when they're out in space, they're going to pull on one another with a very small amount of force. But there will still be a force in reality. So here's how you calculate the gravity between any two objects. It's this one. The problem is that they didn't give us mass. They gave us the weights of these two objects. But let's try anyway. Let's leave those spots blank for now. Like I said, I don't know the mass, so I'll leave that spot blank. Big G is always this number. And it looks like they are 12 meters apart. So we got to find mass for each of these. I go and look at the equations, it'll kind of pop out. Bam, right there. FG is 11,000 for the first object. And since it's on Earth, little g is 9.8. So we'll plug in 11,000 here, we'll plug in 9.8 there, and we'll get M. Same thing for the other object, but it'll be 3,400 right there. So it's kind of rapid fire. FG equals MG. FG equals MG. You could kind of just divide it in your head to like, well, not in your head, but 11,000 equals M times 9.8. 3,400 equals M times 9.8. So you don't really need to write all this. What I'm saying is you could just write 11,000 over 9.8. That's M. And this one is 3,400 over 9.8. So all that, I mean, you could kind of skip all that if you think, if you're strong with math. So when you divide those out, you'll get 1122, two, and you'll get 3, 4, 6.9. And from there, you just look at that other equation. This one is a little easier to type in your calculator than the previous, but I recommend trying it out anyway. The reason this number is so small, the reason our final answer is so small is because these two parts are pretty low mass in comparison to something like a planet. And that's about it.